It's 10 a.m. when the call comes over the radio. All available officers respond to Orchid and Gage. Officer down. This would be no ordinary disturbance. It scared the shit out of me and changed my life. But not for the better. My name is Detective Wilson. Those who know me call me Greg. I never got used to people calling me Officer Wilson or Detective during my years on the force. I'm the leading LAPD homicide investigator. I have only two more months until retirement. But this case may put that on hold for a while. Homicide numbs you to almost everything, and I've seen it all. You never get used to the amount of blood that can come out of a body. Where does it all come from? Cleaning a homicide scene is never easy. Blood is a strange substance. It's sticky and seeps into everything. There's not much that can remove it. The only thing that works is remodeling. When people are worried about selling a home after a homicide and want to know the best way to remove blood, I tell them to remodel. Cut it out in any way possible. Replace the wood, carpet, wall, or whatever comes into contact with it. Blood holds memories, some good and some bad, but mostly bad. I flip on the squad car's siren and lights and arrive in five minutes. I'm the first on the scene. It's chaotic. People are running away from something on the ground. On each side of the street are storefronts. To my right is a squad car with its doors open and lights flashing, but I don't see any signs of the officers. A group of people are standing on the other side of the street, and two men are filming with their phones and pointing to something. Damn phones and social media. What happened to the days when folks dropped everything to help each other out? I hear a man scream out. Watch out, brother. They're gonna eat you too. Don't go over there. What are they talking about? Eat me too? I can't see what they're pointing at. There's something in front of the squad car to my right. I exit my car and pull out my Glock 9mm sidearm. When an officer down call goes out, the situation is tricky and can quickly turn deadly. I do my best to ensure no perpetrators are ready to shoot from a distance or threats close by. Once I feel the area is secure, I advance toward whatever people are pointing at. In the distance, I hear more sirens. Backup and an ambulance are approaching. I slowly round the side of the empty police vehicle and see something that turns my stomach. A male and female officer lie on their backs with five people on top of them. Both their uniforms have been ripped from their bodies. Two males are feasting on the breasts of the female officer, with another feasting on her thigh. And two others are eating the male officer. One looks up at me, and a piece of the officer's throat falls out of his mouth. He grins. I aim my gun and scream. Freeze! Don't move! The man is bloody and comes to his feet. Officer, please don't shoot. On your knees, hands behind your back, down on your stomach. Do it now. I scream. The rest of the freaks stop eating and look up. The rest of you do the same, I say, trying to contain my fear. What the fuck is going on? Two squad cars pull up with lights and sirens blaring. Officer Matt Green and Thomas Henderson quickly exit their vehicles and pull their guns. They advance carefully. What the... Matt? What's going on? What's happening? Thomas says, and then vomits from the sight. I look at them. All of you, stay back. Something's not right here. I'm the first on the scene, and I found all five eating the flesh of the two officers on the ground. I'm not sure what's going on. Call for more backup. Officer Green, you're with me. Keep your gun on them. Watch them carefully. If any of them advances, you have my permission to use lethal force. Understood, and not a problem, detective. More squad cars arrive, and the five are handcuffed and taken in for booking. The two officers lay dead on the ground with bite marks and large chunks of flesh missing from their legs, arms, and neck. The investigators start the work of figuring out what happened. Matt, Thomas, what do you think happened here? I really can't tell you. I've seen nothing like this my entire career. Same here, Greg. It's a first for me. What the hell is happening? Has the world gone completely mad? Listen, guys. I'll head back to the station after we get testimony from the group across the street. I want to question the main suspect who first spoke to me tonight and then the rest tomorrow morning. If anyone needs an update on the case, come back to see me tomorrow. For now, these pieces of shit can rot in a cell, as far as I'm concerned. I hope the district attorney seeks the death penalty. I'm right there with you, Greg. I knew those two officers. They only had two years on the force. Those pieces of shit deserve no mercy for what went down today. Thomas stared blankly at the bloody scene on the ground. An hour later, Office Green returns. I watch him walk over with an uneasy look on his face. What do you have for us, Green? 
He sighs and then blows air through his lips. This is out of a horror movie. What I gathered from the witnesses is that the group of five were walking together down the street, talking and laughing. The two filming had just passed them on the opposite side of the road. They watched them begin breaking car and storefront windows. The police were called and arrived within minutes. When they didn't obey the officers' commands, the officers fired tasers and pepper spray at them. That only made them more aggressive. They were inhumanly fast and knocked down both officers before they could draw their guns. The rest you saw after you arrived on the scene. No one knows what set them off. You just listened to Chapter 1 of Mutation. Mutation is an end-of-the-world, edge-of-your-seat horror thriller that will shock you and terrify you well after you turn the last page. Click the link in the description to grab the entire book today.